Good morning friends. I hope everyone is doing well. I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding. In this video, I want to discuss about what is a pushdown automata and what is the difference between a pushdown automata and a, a finite automata and then we will discuss about the components which are there in the pushdown automata. If you have watched my earlier videos, I have discussed about a regular grammar and I have discussed regular long ways, then the regular long ways, how it can be modeled by using a finite automata. And then we have discussed that a power n, b power n, n is greater than or equal to 1. These kind of long ways are not regular long ways. Using pumping lemma, we have proved that it is not a regular long ways. If it is not a regular long ways, we cannot able to model by using a finite automata. Then what is this long ways is? This long ways belongs to context free long ways. Then this context free long ways can be modeled by using a push down automata. Okay. So it is used to model context free long ways. So context free long ways, we will have a context free grammar. Context free grammar generates the context free long ways and can be modeled by using a push down automata. As if you see that finite automata has NFA, DFA and Epsilon NFA. Similarly, pushdown automata also have two types. One is deterministic pushdown automata and non-deterministic pushdown automata. In the next video, we will discuss about what is the difference between deterministic and non-deterministic pushdown automata. Now we will discuss about the introduction related to the pushdown automata. It is more powerful than finite automata. What is meant by more powerful? The pushdown automata accepts more number of long ways or it can model more number of long ways as compared to the finite automata. So in TOC, whenever you have listened the word called powerful, then meaning is that if X is more powerful than Y, if they say X is more powerful than Y, then meaning is that X can model more number of long ways as compared to the y. So here I can say that pushdown automata can model or accepts more number of long ways as compared to the finite automata. Now pushdown automata can be called as a finite automata plus one stack means it can be useful for us to store the strings all the components. So this will act as a memory. If you see that finite automata, we don't have a memory. Why it cannot able to model by using a finite automata? If you see that I need to count the number of A's and I need to count the number of B's and then I have to compare whether the number of A's are equal to number of B's. As the finite automata does not have a memory, I cannot able to do all these things. However, we can do by using the pushdown automata because we have a stack. The pushdown automata has three components. One is input tape and finite control unit and a stack. Okay, these things I have represented using a diagram. If you see that we have an input tape. Now what is the input tape consists of? Let's take that I may have a long ways with alphabets A comma B. Our alphabets A comma B, I'm generating some pushdown automata. Then the string, let's take that A, A, B, B. A, A, B, B, for this A, A, B, B, I want to check whether it is accepted or not. Whatever the pushdown automata I am constructing, for this string it is accepted or not, I want to check. And remember one thing, every string should ends with an epsilon. So it is useful for us to identify that the string is completed. So input tape consists of what is the string we are taking. And you have a finite control unit which consists of your initial state, your final state, intermediate state and the transitions, everything will be there in the finite control unit and you have a stack. So stack is used for storing the data. Now what is this finite control unit? This finite control unit I can say that it is a finite automata. Okay. So we will discuss about the stack. Those people who have studied the data structures course, they may know about the stack. Just for an introduction, let me discuss about what is a stack and what are the operations are there in the stack for better understanding. Usually, if you know that stack is operates on a principle called lost in first out. 
எல்ஐஎஃப்ஓ லாஸ்ட் இன் லாஸ்ட் இன் ஃபஸ்ட் அவுட் மீனிங் இஸ் தட் இஃப் யூ சி தட் ஸ்டாக் வில் பி ரெப்ரஸன்டட் லைக் திஸ் அண்ட் இஃப் ஐ ஹாவ் த்ரீ எலிமெண்ட்ஸ் லைக் ஏபிசி ஸோ ஹவு ஐ கேன் இன்செட் இஃப் ஐ வாண்ட் டு இன்செட் ஏபிசி ஃபஸ்ட் ஐ வில் இன்செட் ஏ இட் இனிஷியலி ஸ்டாக் இஸ் எம்டி லெட் மீ டேக் ஸ்டாக் இஸ் எம்டி சாரி ஃபார் த இன்கன்வீனியன்ஸ் ஸ்டாக் இஸ் எம்டி ஐ வாண்ட் டு புஷ் ஏ ஸோ இட் கேன் விக்கம் தென் ஐ வாண்ட் டு இன்செட் பி பி வில் கம் ஹியர் ஐ வாண்ட் டு இன்செட் சி C will come. Now this is the top. Okay. So whatever the element which has inserted at last will come first. Means C is the element which is inserted at last. Whenever I am deleting or if I am removing the elements, first I need to remove the C. Then I need to remove the B. Then I need to remove the A. So that's why we call it as tag works on the principle called last in first out or first in last out. Now basically it consists of two operations. One is push and second one is pop. Push is nothing but inserting an element inside the stack. And pop is that deleting the element from the stack. And you have a pointer called top which is using for the highlighting the top of the stack. So I hope you have understood what is a stack and what are the operations of the stack. and what is a push down automata and what are the components in the push down automata in the next video i will discuss about how to represent a push down automata thank you for watching my video if you have any doubts feel free to ask it in the comment section i will clear your doubts in less than 24 hours thank you